speaking to us today. Um, can you offer any reassurance to Theresa Villiers and other members of your party who are worried about this that the government isn't going soft on Brexit? Uh, no, we're not going soft. There's been no backsliding on the, um, on the Prime Minister's Lancaster House speech where she set out the framework for our future relationships and, uh, and we will be regaining control of our laws, our money and our borders. We will be establishing an independent trade policy as she set out in, in that speech. So there has been so, no backsliding. So that remains completely the policy wrong to be worried that Brexit is being diluted, is she? Sorry, say that again. Theresa Villiers is completely wrong when she says she's worried that Brexit is being diluted? Um, yes, yeah, she is wrong. It's not being diluted. Uh, that remains the policy of the government. The Prime Minister is in charge of the negotiations and we will be negotiating with our European partners in good faith. They are our friends and allies, uh, but the objectives that we have for the negotiations remain as she set out. So it's the Chancellor then who was completely wrong when he said there would only be very modest changes in our relationship? No, I think that the Chancellor has said that he is supportive of government policy, he is supportive of the vision that the Prime Minister has, uh, has set out. And so was he that's how we will be negotiating. Was he government policy when he said there would only be modest changes in our relationship with the EU? Uh, we will be uh, negotiating with our European partners to bring about uh, uh, frictionless trading arrangements but the important part of the negotiations is that we have to regain control of our ability to set our own rules and regulations. Now clearly there may be some areas where uh, if there's a very integrated supply lines we might want to reflect current EU regulations but the important thing is that we decide those matters for ourselves. Now David Davis presumably does speak for um, the government when he's describing the transition phase which is what the next uh, stage of talks will be about uh, and he says that during this implementation period people will of course be able to travel between the UK and the EU to live and work. That sounds like free movement is continuing as before but we were told by the government it would end as soon as we left the EU in 2019. Well, we will be introducing a registration scheme for new uh, EU entrants, so we know uh, who is coming to the country. Okay, but that's, uh, but that's got then, nothing to do with but the scheme in the EU. We could have done that right now. the phase where we take control of our immigration policy. But this registration uh, idea, this is not something that comes about because we've left the EU. We could have introduced that years ago if we wanted to. Several other European countries ask UK citizens to register when they're there. That's got nothing to do with us leaving the European Union. Well, we still have the details of how the implementation period will operate. So let's see what the, uh, what the negotiations produce. But what we want to do is we want to reflect the current rules and regulations as closely as possible so that at the end of the implementation period, and it's important that is strictly time limited, we agree with the EU on that, that, uh, that at the end of that state we will introduce a new immigration policy and we will be able to take control of our rules, regulations and borders. That sounds an awful lot like continuing free movement when we were told specifically by the government that when we left the EU in 2019 free movement would end at that point. It's starting to look like a red line that's gone very pale pink. Uh, let, we're, we're about to have the negotiations. We're waiting for the EU to produce uh, their guidelines. We will sit down in good faith with our European partners, talk about how the implementation period will work um, and what the end state will, yeah, will but, be. But we, don't we will have transition to wait to, to find out what the UK government's position is because David Davis set it out in a speech this week and he pretty much described free movement continuing as it is. As I said, we are having the negotiations. We're about to start them. Um, let's not give away our positions before we do that. We will be negotiating uh, in good faith and we want to reach an agreement as soon as possible so that we get certainty that business knows where we're going at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the period um, and we will move towards the new state at the end of a strictly time-limited implementation period. So would it be helpful if the Prime Minister were to make another speech following on from Lancaster House in Florence where she set out clearly what the government's position is on the future direction of travel, on the transition period and on the future end state so that instead of listening to cabinet ministers who have clearly divergent views on this, we knew from the Prime Minister what the government's policy was? What we do know what the Prime Minister has said is the government's policy. The government's policy remains what she set out in detail in the Lancaster House speech followed up by the Florence speech where she outlined the new end state we, we want to end up with and the procedures for, for getting there. And she set it out in great detail. I can talk in detail about the three baskets of regulations if you want, but that was very clear. But we do need to have a negotiation at the end of the day, and Theresa has said that. There will be compromises on both sides. There were in the first phase of the negotiation. These are difficult, complicated and tricky areas. Okay. But we remain focused on the end state, which is that we believe in the single market, we believe in the customs union, we'll be having an independent trade policy and we will be deciding our own rules and regulations. Now, the EU withdrawal bill will come to the Lords this week, uh, to your house. Are we going to see government compromise on some of the things that peers are worried about and you could potentially be defeated on in the Lords? 
Well, we will be listening to the debate. Uh, we showed as the legislation went through the House of Commons that we're prepared to reflect, we're prepared to think about contributions that are made, and if people have suggestions that we agree with that will improve the, uh, the legislation, then of course we will do that. The House so of Lords so has a very like important role in revising legislation. It sounds like you're quite open-minded then to government amendments on something out, like the um, Henry VIII Effectively, powers. and we will, we will listen to what the debate says. So you're, you're open to government amendments changing the EU withdrawal bill? Sorry, I didn't hear that. You're, you're, you're open to amendments changing the EU withdrawal bill on issues like the Henry VIII powers or something like that? Uh, well, we've already compromised on those areas in, in the House of Commons, so uh, we will listen to what, uh, what the debate uh, brings. The uh, peers take their role of scrutinising EU legislation very closely, and uh, we will reflect on that, introduce changes if we think they are warranted. Right. Lord Callanan, thanks for talking to us this morning.